Hello and welcome. I'll be talking to you about how we process videos at Meta, and especially how to do that by maintaining the best quality by being very energy efficient using MSVP, Meta's Scalable Video Processor. My name is Yanis Katsavunidis, and I'm part of Video Infra. Everybody's familiar with Meta's family of apps, Facebook, Messenger, Instagram, and WhatsApp, and our hardware products such as the Oculus Quest. There are more than 3.7 billion monthly active users and more than 2.9 daily users. But you probably didn't know that video overall makes up more than 50% of the time spent on Facebook. Video is king, and that shows up in many of our products, such as our short form video called Reels, premium music video, the unique social experience of watching together, and of course, live video. What makes unique video processing at Meta is the wide variety of content. We have everything, including video on demand, live and real-time processing, and that includes both user-generated and professional content. Here is how and why we process videos at Meta. Everything starts with video on your mobile phone that first gets uploaded to our data centers. There it gets transcoded into different formats and different resolutions. For example, one may need to deliver it to a mobile phone at 700 kilobits per second, or a tablet connected on a Wi-Fi at 2 megabits per second, or your browser on your computer at 20 megabits per second. There are four basic processing steps when transcoding videos. After the video is uploaded, first step is to decode it into frames or pixels, then resized into smaller resolutions. Next step is to encode it into more sophisticated codecs such as AV1, and last but not least, calculating the quality of that transcode using standard quality metrics. Now, there is a two-part trade-off that everybody is familiar with, and that's the trade-off between quality and bits spent. But at Meta, we have a third component, and that's the amount of compute we spend to do all this processing. And that trade-off means that you cannot improve all three at the same time. For example, in order to keep constant quality and spend less compute, you pay that by using more bits. Now it's time for my friend Harry to explain how we do it using MSVP. Thank you, Yoni, for the great introduction. Hello, I'm Hari Krishna. Before we go through the MSVP architecture, let's look at the motivation behind building MSVP. Meta's billion scalar video needs an energy efficient and a low latency video transcoding solution. We mostly process pre-encoded videos, which means the video quality is already degraded from the source. So we need an encoder that is at par with the best-in-class software encoders to preserve the video quality. So these stringent requirements led us to building the MSVP. As Yanni mentioned, these are the key components of the transcoder pipeline. Every uploaded video first needs to be decoded to produce the original pixels. We support H.264, H.265, VP9, and AV1 codec formats. These pixels are then sent through overlay composition, cropping, and rotation as required before being resized to produce the various resolutions we need for the encoding. The resized frames are then encoded for H.264 and VP9 format. We also have a quality metric module to compute the similarity metrics for every encoded video. The, in this pipeline, the pixels mostly are exchanged through these modules directly. If not, we also have a large on-chip cache to exchange the pixels which need a slightly li longer lifetime. And for those pixels which need much more than a frame worth of life, we send them through off-chip memory. And before we send them to off-chip memory, we also compress the pixels to save energy. This pipeline is programmable to support various quality presets through the firmware running on this RISC-V controller. Apart from this, we also have a JPEG image transcoder in this pipeline. And this pipeline is programmable either to operate as a, in a single pass encoding to for the applications which need very low latency or as a multi-pass encoding to produce for high quality videos. And this pixel, this pipeline at the peak can support single input, multiple output transcoding at 1 billion pixels per second with less than 10 watt. Compared to software encoding, this is nine times faster with half the energy. This pipeline can also support transcoding from 4K to QCIF, and the frame rate varies and is directly proportional to the video resolution. Within the preprocessor, apart from overlay composition, scalar is the key component there. In our scaler, we use 25-tap 2D filters. These offer very high precision filtering. 
and to offer a far superior quality compared to any conventional scalers used in the industry. We also need to support arbitrary frame sizes in our use cases. And then we also support scaling from 4K to QCIF in a single step. Within the transcoding pipeline, encoder is the most compute intensive module and the architecture choices we make pretty much dictate the video quality of all the videos coming out of the transcoder. We use a three-stage motion search which is programmable and can support a very wide search range. We support plus or minus 512 pixels in the horizontal direction and a plus or minus 160 pixel search in the vertical direction across multiple reference frames. We also support a near exhaustive mode decision using rate distortion in every decision. Rate distortion optimizer or RDO is one of the best known practices in video compression to determine the optimal mode decision. The distortion calculation itself is very compute intensive but parallelizable. However, the rate estimation is very serial in nature. We use a novel rate estimation model in MSVP to allow us using multiple of these RDO engines in parallel to get us the speed we need. We also use many smart quantization techniques and also other proprietary algorithms in our video pipe. And finally, we also use three of these encoder pipes to process three consecutive macro block or super macro block rows in a wavefront parallel manner. Here we show you the quality metric module. The way we implement and use quality metric in our video traffic is very unique to MSVP. So for we support SSIM, multi-scale SSIM, WIF, PSNR, and no reference metrics like blur in our quality metric module. And also the, the quality metric module is pretty compute intensive in the sense that for every, in a typical case, for every uploaded video, we need to produce five different encoding resolutions. And for each of these encoding resolutions, we need to compute similarity metrics at five different viewport resolutions, which means total we need about 25 quality metric computa computations for every uploaded video. So finally here, we show you how all the transcoder IPs we discussed earlier is packaged with the PCIe controller to connect to the host. And then we also have a memory controller to connect to the off-chip memory where we store all the intermediate pixels. We also have a secure boot processor to authenticate the firmware running on this ASIC. We also have many peripherals to help us on the debug and diagnostics. On the right, we show you the die shot. This is a 100 millimeter square chip in seven nanometer and encoder takes more than 50% of the area here. And finally, this SOC along with the LPDDR modules is packaged onto this M.2 connector. We have two of these connectors with the heat sinks going on to into a GPV3. This GPV3 is coupled with a host server into a sled and we have two of these sleds going into a cubby and we have several of these cubbies going into the data center. I'll now hand it off to Yanni. We'll talk about how MSVP is used in our data centers. Thank you, Harry. So much goodness here. So now it's my turn to show you how we use it in our data centers. The wide variety of videos and the distribution of popularities dictates different treatment for different videos. Videos with less views get the so-called basic treatment, while the more popular videos get our advanced family of encodings. This is all enabled by MSVP. In this example, you see how by doing multiple encodings at different resolutions, we can get the optimal settings that allows us to get the best quality for a given bitrate. But the best part of it is that after you do all these multiple encodings using MSVP, you can get the corresponding settings and do another pass using a software encode to get even better quality. In this example, you see how the convex hole, which is those best quality settings, can translate from AVC to AV1, giving us an additional 65% bitrate savings. So in summary, we use MSVP because we have a wide variety of content, both premium and user-generated, VOD live in real time. We use those best practices and that gives us the best end-to-end -end quality. MSVP allows us to do both the basic encoding using the lowest amount of latency, all the way to the advanced ABR encoding to push quality to the max. It also gives us many potential other opportunities, such as to use it in live and broadcasting, where the even lower latency matters a lot. We can do advanced pre-processing both to improve quality and also use it for video understanding. Our North Star is always to offload the majority of those stable and mature video processing 
in order to use software only as a thin layer to further boost quality wherever that matters. So, are we done yet? Well, we'd like to do many more of these by adding more video codec standards such as AV1. We're going to support more and better video quality metrics. We're going to further improve video and audio quality by doing pre- and post-processing such as denoising or deblocking and artifact removal. We're going to push even more pixels through the same die and we'd like to stay focused on Meta's most important use cases such as to reduce the compute and storage footprint, to improve quality for our short form videos, and to enable the immersive 360 XR VR videos and other metaverse content. Thank you, and we welcome your collaboration.